with me to 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 8. Second Kings chapter six and verse eight. I still see people turning. Second Kings chapter six, verse eight. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him, and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. But Elisha, the prophet that is in that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host encamped about the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And somebody say amen. Amen. Before you're seated, go ahead and give the Lord one more shout of praise tonight. Oh, come on. Give him the best shout you've given him all night. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You can be seated tonight. The king of Syria was angry because the king of Israel always knew where he placed his troops. No matter what he did to try to set traps and to try to kill the king of Israel, uh, the king of Israel always knew his plans. And so he calls his servants together and he says, Which of you is the traitor? Which of you have been telling the king of Israel all of my plans? Which of you have been telling him where I've been placing my troops? Which one is the traitor? And the servants talk to the king. They say, It's none of us, but it's the prophet of God. It's Elijah, the prophet of God. In Israel, he is the one that is telling the king of Israel all of your plans. And so the king of Syria, he sets out to find Elisha. And they manage to track him down in Dothan. And so he sends his troops to encamp around the entire city. And you guys know, if you read it, I know it's I'm rehashing it because sometimes reading it is a little bit different. But they encamp around the whole city. And Elisha, his servant, goes out and he sees the enemy that's encamped around him. And he begins to fear. He goes up to Elisha. He says, what do we do? What do we do? I look around and I see all the chariots. I see the horses. I see the enemy about us ready to kill us. What do we do? And Elisha prays for his servant and he says, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the eyes of the servant are open. And he looks about and he sees the the horses and the chariots of fire that are in the mountains surrounding the enemy around him. I want to bring tonight to your attention the change in perspective between the prophet and the servant. Because after he prayed for the servant's eyes to be open, the situation did not change. There was still an enemy about him. There was still his enemy ready to kill him, ready to entrap him. But because his perspective had shifted, because he was able to see who fought with him, He no longer had fear. See, a change in your perspective, a revelation in your understanding, an opening in your eyes can take what looks like a defeat and turn it into a victory. The difference between Elisha is because Elisha knew who was fighting for him. He could see God standing with him. He saw the host with him that was fighting for him. And the servant could only see the enemy that was about him. 
There are situations in our life, there's storms in our life that we are so focused on what is up against us. We are so focused on what is coming after us that we don't see who is for us. And we don't see who is fighting for us. And that's why we fear. That's why we worry. That's why we stress. That's why we struggle. It's because we are so focused on the issues, so focused on the hell in our life that we don't see who's fighting for us. And so we need a change in our perspective. We need a shift in our focus on what we're looking at. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45, David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, who thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword and the spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands when David stood against Goliath Saul tries to take his armor his own armor and put it upon David because his faith wasn't in David and his faith wasn't in the God of David his faith was in his armor and David refused. He said, I'm, I'm not going to use this armor. It's untested. This, this isn't what I'm going into battle with. I'm not putting my faith in this armor. And you know the story. You know that he takes his sling and five smooth stones and he goes out and he slays Goliath. How is it that a shepherd boy who has never been in a battle can go into battle against a giant twice his size and slay him when the entire army of Israel was in fear? There wasn't a single man in the entire army. And you know they weren't all normal men. You know that there had to be fighting men in the army of Israel. You know that there were giants in Israel. You know that there were big men, men who knew war, men who were bloody, men who fought. And yet none of them would stand against this Philistine. Because they were so focused on their strength. They were so focused on what they could do and what their enemy appeared to be that they forgot that it was not in their power or their ability that gave them the battle. David was able to stand against the giant twice his size because he looked to the Lord. He said, I don't come to you with a sword or a spear. I come to you in the name of the Lord. His focus was on the strength of God. His focus was on who it was that was fighting with him. It's amazing when you stop looking at your own ability. You can do a lot more. You know... I, I don't know anybody in here that any of the trials the enemy throws against you, any of the storms, I don't know anybody who can honestly stand against them on your own. If you can, if you can stand against any of them on your own, you are a lot stronger than I am. You've got a lot more wisdom, a lot more power. Because the fact is, the enemy knows our weaknesses. The enemy knows where to hit us. The enemy knows where to cut us down. And whenever we start looking at our strengths and we try to compare our strengths to the strength of the enemy, our wisdom to the wisdom of the enemy, we're going to fail every time. And we get frustrated, we get irritated because we're, we're, we're here and we're in the middle of this battle and we don't know how to fight it. Because our perspective is wrong. Because we're focusing too much on us and too much on the enemy and not on the promises of God. Not on the power of God. Not on the anointing of God. We've got to shift our focus. We've got to start looking at how crazy our situations are. We've got to stop looking at how little our job pays or looking at what the enemy is throwing our way. And we've got to start looking at who sits on the throne of heaven. Joseph had a dream of ruling over his brothers. And in fact, he had multiple dreams of ruling over his brothers. One, the sun and the moon and the stars all bow down before him. And another, the wheat bows down before him. And he's his father's favorite son. He's, he's the favorite. And the next thing that happens in the story of Joseph is the very brothers that he thought he was going to rule over want to kill him. And instead, they throw him into a pit to keep from killing him. And so if you would look at the situation of Joseph, you've got to imagine what's going on in his mind. He's been given a promise of God, and yet the next thing that happens is the complete opposite of everything that was promised to him. Instead of the people who are supposed to bow down to him, instead now they're trying to kill him. The very people that he thought he would rule over and lord over, now here they are throwing him into a pit to die. 
And yet Joseph never questions God. And how do we know that? We know that because whenever he gets out of the pit and he's in Potiphar's house, he runs from Potiphar's wife because he doesn't want to commit evil. We see that he's blessed in everything he does. Even, even in the pit, even in Potiphar's house, even in the dungeon, he's blessed. The hand of God is upon him. Because Joseph in the pit learned not to look at his situation, but to look at the promises of God. He learned not to look at his circumstances, but to trust in what God had promised to him. And to trust in the one who sat on the throne of heaven. Amen. Could you imagine tonight... God gives you a promise that your children are going to be saved. And yet you look about and you see that there's the farthest thing from them being saved is what's happening. They're lost. They're in the world. They, they won't come for anything. They won't come to church if you paid them. Can you believe that God tells you He's going to bless you financially and you're so far in debt you have no idea how... how what, do you, what do you do in those situations when God has given you a promise and yet it looks like the complete opposite... I know a lot of times what we do is we start trying to figure our way out of it. We start trying to look at our abilities and we get stressed and depressed because we don't know how to get out of it. We don't know how to bring them out. We don't know how to speak a right word to change a situation. And we get frustrated because we focus so much on our ability and not on Him. Do you know how much peace you would have when you would start looking at the God of heaven and knowing that He still has control in your life? Knowing that He's still got His hand on your kids. Knowing that His promises are still going to come true. See, we, we would have so much more joy and so much more victory in our life when we would shift our perspective. When we'd stop looking at everything that's gone wrong. When we'd start looking at everything that's, that's not quite right. And instead, we'd look at the one who is the author and the finisher of our life. The one who hung the stars is still on the throne tonight. Whatever it is, whatever it is that you're facing tonight, whatever storm, whatever trouble you're going through, you may need to shift your perspective. You may need to change your focus. And, and another way of saying that, instead of just saying a perspective, is it's called a revelation. And that's what it is, because God has to reveal it to you. The Spirit of God has to illuminate. That's why Elisha prayed and he said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Because him said, he had already told him, he said, there's more for us than are against us. And yet the servant didn't see anything. The servant still didn't understand. He had to be revealed to him. His eyes had to be opened. And that's why it's so important for us to spend our time in the Word. That's why it's so important for us to spend our time in prayer. That's why it's so important for us to spend our time in the presence of God. Because it's in that time that we get into the Word and we get the promises of God that He reveals to us His promises. That He reveals to us that He still has His hand in our situation. That He still knows where we are. That we're still going to come out. On the other side, it's important for us to get in the presence of God. What, what promises are you holding on to tonight? Have you been in your word? Have, are you holding on to the scripture tonight that says the battle's not mine? Are you holding on to that? Not, not because I, I read it a while ago, but have you been getting in there? Has it been revealed to you? See, you can repeat something over and over. But until God reveals it in your spirit, it doesn't open your eyes. You can quote a scripture all day long, but until God places that in your spirit and suddenly there's an, a twisting and an unlocking in your mind and in your heart and you see that the battle's not mine. The battle was never mine. The battle was His. So why do I spend so much energy fighting? Why do I spend so much stress, so much worry, fighting over something that I shouldn't even have to deal with? I'm going to learn to put it in His hands, and I'm going to learn that He knows what I need to do. Jesus. It's a lot easier, and I'm finished tonight, but it's a lot easier to carry our cross when we understand there's a purpose. It's a lot easier to go through hell when you know that there's a reason for it. 
It's a lot easier to stand in the fire when you know that he's in the fire with you. And, and that's what the Bible talks about when it talks about peace that passes all understanding. In other words, you can't explain it. You can't say, I, I'm going to come out of this. You can't say that this is what's going to happen. You have no idea what's going to happen, but you know that he's still with you. You know that in the fire, I may not come out of this alive, but I know he's still with me. I may not ever set this cross down, but I know he's still with me. I may never get out of this pit, but I know he's still with me. And in that, I can have peace. In that, I can have joy and I can have victory. Because I'm taking my eyes off of my strength and I'm taking my eyes off of my situation and I'm going to start focusing on Him. I'm going to shift my perspective and I'm going to begin to look at His strength. I'm going to start looking and know that He's got more wisdom than me. He's got more knowledge. He is guiding my footsteps every week. If we can stand tonight and give the Lord some praise. Come on, somebody give him some praise tonight. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you ask me, I don't know how you're going to come through it. I don't. I don't know what you can do to get to the other side. I don't know what you can do to forgive. I don't know what you can do to get past the hurt. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how your kids are going to come back in. But there's one who does know. There, there's one who even if you don't understand, even if you can't see it, you can still put your trust and your faith in Him. You can still have peace when you don't understand, when it doesn't make sense, when you're at the end, when you're on your knees and you've cried your last tear, you can still have joy because you know that He is still in control. You know that He's still sitting on the throne tonight. Mm, Jesus, Jesus, can we reach out just for a moment here? Mm, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, somebody, just for a moment here, reach out. Jesus. Mm, Lord, right now, all across this place, oh God. Lord, everyone that's listening to this message, oh God. Lord, right now I ask that you open their eyes, open their understanding, oh God. Lord, let them see the host that is fighting for them. God, let them see your plans. Let them see your moving. God, give them clarity of vision, oh Lord. Remove the blinders, remove the field, remove the cloud, oh God. Lord, let them have peace again. Let them have joy again. Let them have victory again. Knowing that you are on the throne. Knowing that you are still moving. You are still working, oh God. That even when we don't understand it, you still are in control. God, right now I speak victory. Lord, right now I speak peace. I speak understanding, oh God. Lord, we command depression and oppression to leave. Lord, we command worry and stress to leave. God, let us be free in our hearts, free in our minds, free in our spirits tonight. Lord, let us run after you with joy. Lord, let us run after you with happiness, with peace. Lord, in the midst of our darkness, in the midst of not understanding, oh God. Lord, let your light shine through. God, in the midst of the fire. Let us be a witness that there's peace in the storm. Jesus, Jesus, name we pray tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody.
somebody give the Lord some praise tonight. Come on, give him a shout of praise tonight. Isn't the Lord good? Isn't He good tonight? Well, come on, I say, give me one more shout of praise. 